All right, first topic: time value of money, future value of a single cash flow. So, if you want to find out future value, that would be equal to cash flow into one plus whatever is the interest rate raised to n, which is your time period. Present value of a single cash flow. Present value would be equal to future value divided by one plus interest rate raised to n. Present value of a perpetuity. Value of a perpetuity of time zero is equal to cash flow of time one divided by discount rate. This is particularly important because if you are told that starting from year four, let's say starting from year four, the first cash flow being at the end of year four, cash flow given every year would be ten thousand. What is the value today at time zero? What you need to appreciate here is. That since you have perpetuity starting from year four, you would be able to fetch value at time three, which would be ten thousand divided by whatever is the discount rate. And once you have this value at time three, to find out the value today, you should discount backwards only for three years, not four periods, or not four years. Next one is continuous compounding and future values. So let us say the formula for future value is. Future value is equal to present value into e raised to r t, r being the interest rate and t is the time period, and present value is equal to future value into e raised to minus r t, or which is same as future value divided by e raised to r t. But how do you use this uh, on your calculator? Let us say that interest rate is ten percent. Present value is hundred, and you want to take future value for four years. Then your R is the R is the interest rate here, which is ten, and four is the time period, which is t. So on your financial calculator, first you get point one zero, then you multiply that with four, which will give you point four zero. Then press second and press e raise to x. That will give you one point. Four nine, one eight, and multiply that with your present value to find out what should be the future value. In the same fashion, if the interest rate is ten percent, and you want to find out what would be the future value for one hundred and sixty-five days, then your e is again zero point one zero, but now this time t is going to be one sixty-five divided by three sixty-five. Then whatever is this number, then say second. Then say e raised to x, and then you will have your future value factor, which would be one point something, one point zero four. In the same fashion, if you get to know that hundred rupees have become one hundred and seventy in one year, what is the continuously compounded rate? Then you would say one seventy divided by hundred, and then press the log normal button, which will give you about sixty. How much? How much? Point. Point five. Point five three zero. So about fifty three percent. Seventy percent discrete is fifty three percent. Have you got it? One seventy divided by hundred, and then press the log normal button directly. How much? One seventy divided by hundred, and only press L and don't press second. Zero point. Reset the calculator then. And what if I tell you that one seventy has become hundred, or sorry, hundred has become one seventy in two years? Then this point five three divided by two, that's your rate. If hundred has become one seventy in two years, so then you would say one seventy divided by hundred. Press the log normal button and then divide this value with two, and that's your interest rate per year. so on and so forth next one is effective annual rate so this is nothing but 1 plus whatever is the holding period return raised to the number of years in which we have to do compounding for example for 3 months we have earned a return of 4% what would be the effective annual rate it would be 1 plus 4% raised to 12 by 3 which would be raised to 4 
For six months, if you've been able to earn a return of eight percent, what is per annum effective annual rate? So this would be one plus eight percent raised to twelve by six. Nominal risk-free rate. This part would be repeated again in economics. That nominal risk-free rate is nothing but real risk-free rate plus the compensation for inflation. Okay, so real rate plus inflation is similar to nominal risk-free rate. Next topic: discounted cash flow method. First one: NPV. NPV is nothing but present value of all the inflows minus present value of outflows and this NPV can directly be calculated using the NPV button on your calculator. Next formula is money weighted rate of return. Money weighted rate of return is nothing but the IRR of the cash flows of the portfolio manager and since in case of money weighted the manager is allowed to time the market this is an appropriate measure for which kind of fund manager? Closed end, because closed end fund managers are allowed to time the market. Time weighted rate of return is nothing but a geometric mean of all the holding period returns, and this is more appropriate for those managers who are not allowed to time the market, which is typically useful for open end fund managers. So let's do a comprehensive example for these two. Let us say stock is priced at two hundred at time zero. 250 at time 1 and 210 at time 2. It also gave a dividend, so this is price. It also gave a dividend of rupees 10 at time 1 and rupees 10 at time 2 per share. A fund manager purchased 50 quantities, sorry, 5 quantities here. 10 quantities here and he sold all the 15 quantities here. We want to calculate money weighted rate of return and time weighted rate of return. To calculate money weighted rate of return we are just going to calculate the IRR for which we need the cash flows. So cash flow at time 0 would be minus 1000, 200 into 5. Cash flow at time 1 he's purchased 10 stocks of 250 each which would be minus 2500 however he had five stocks in this period so he will get to earn a total dividend of 50 and therefore cash flows would be minus 2450 in this case he sold all the 15 stocks for a price of 210 so that is 2000 3000 3150 plus he will get a dividend of 10 on all the 15 stocks because he purchased 5 here and 10 here so that would be additional dividend of 150 which will give us a total cash flow of 3300 so in your financial calculator cash flow 0 negative 1000 cash flow 1 negative 2450 and cash flow 2 positive 3300 and then compute IRR minus 3.39% so this is your money weighted rate of return how do we calculate it time weighted rate of return we'll have to calculate holding period return of each of the stock so in the first case the trick with time weighted is to simply ignore the quantity so a 200 rupee stock became 250 plus it gave a dividend of 10. So holding period return is 260 divided by 200. In the second period, a 250 rupee stock became 210 and it gave a dividend of 10. So 220 divided by 250 and then simply calculate a geometric mean of these values. Since there are two years, second root of this number. And that would give us a time weighted rate of return is 6.95%. Moving further, four separate yields, 
bank discount, holding period, effective annual and money market yields. These yields we can remember using the analogy of mistakes. So let us say we have a T bill which we have purchased for a price of 960. It has got a face value of 1000 and the maturity of 180 days. The first thing we can calculate is the holding period yield which is the benefit of 40 on an investment of 960 which would be benefit of 40 on 960 which would be 4.16 percent this is your holding period yield this holding period yield can be annualized without making a single mistake and then this would be called as effective annual yield so which three mistakes we do not have to do here number one we are going to use compounding number two 365 days and number three the base or denominator is going to be 960 in this case so 1 plus 4.16 percent raised to 365 divided by 180 right we've just learned the formula effective annual yield which would be on your financial calculator 1.0416 virus to x bracket open 365 divided by 180 bracket close equal to eight point six three percent this is your what minus one minus one for the formula that's assumed so eight point six three percent is your effective annual yield then we can again annualize this but this time we can we are going to make one mistake or the first mistake which is that we will not use compounding anymore so no compounding however second and third would be same we will use 365 and we will use 960 as denominator and now this yield would be called as bond equivalent yield so for bond equivalent yield we can simply make proportionate calculations like this that for 180 we have earned 4.16 how much will we earn for a period of 365 days so therefore 4.16 into 365 divided by 180 which would be 8.4 okay 8.44 then we would make two mistakes to get the next yield that now there would be no compounding and we will use 360 days but the base will still be 960 and this yield that we get is now called money market yield so again proportionate calculation for 180 days the yield is 4.16 how much for 360 days so simply 4.16 into 360 by 180 that has to be 8.32 and now the last one where we would make all the three mistakes and now this is called as a bank discount yield we remember this by saying that bank is the one which will make all the mistakes so three mistakes would be no compounding 360 days and the base is now going to be 1000 so on 1000 we have earned 40 so that's a return of 4% so for 180 days we have earned 4% how much will we earn for 360 days and that would give us 8% so if you use this analogy it would be easier to remember all the formulas on the exams next topic statistical concepts and market return first population mean just add up all the values divided by n sample mean add up all the values divided by n minus 1 geometric mean if you have three values let's say 6% 8% and 12% you can calculate a geometric mean by saying 1.06 into 1.08 into 1.12 cube root since we have three values Harmonic mean, if you have three values like this, 6, 7 and 9, 
हार्मोनिक मीन वुड बी वन थ्री डिवाइडेड बाय वन बाय सिक्स प्लस वन बाय सेवन प्लस वन बाय नाइन नेक्स्ट वन इज मीडियन मीडियन इज नथिंग बट डिवाइडिंग योर डेटा सेट्स इन टू टू इक्वल पार्ट्स सो वी अरेंज द डेटा इन टू एन ऑर्डर एंड फाइंड आउट एन प्लस वन बाय टू एथ वैल्यू एंड देन दैट वैल्यू शुड बी द मीडियन ऑफ द डेटा सेट रेंज रेंज इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन smallest and the largest number so if your data set is like this minus 20 7 8 5 and let's say 62 then the smallest value is minus 20 largest value is 62 difference of these two would be 82 which would be your range then mean absolute deviation or mat mat would be simply the summation of absolute values of x minus x bar divided by n so let us say your values are like this 6 14 and 10 then with these three values we can calculate a mean mean of these three values would be 10 and then we can calculate x minus x bar but the absolute values so 6 minus 10 ignoring the sign would be 4 14 minus 10 would be 4 and 10 minus 10 would be 0 Then a summation of x minus x bar, which would give us eight. Eight divided by three, your value would come out to be two point six seven, which is your mean absolute deviation. Next one is population variance, population standard deviation. Summation of x minus x bar square divided by n. This is your variance, and if you take under root of this number, this is your standard deviation. If you have probability data. Not the historical data. Then instead of having n in the denominator, you simply multiply this with the probability, and then you have your variance and standard deviation. In the same fashion, if you have a sample variance or sample standard deviation, then the formula would be summation of x minus x bar square divided by n minus one under root. Next one is Shibashov's inequality. So Shibashov's inequality works regardless of the distribution of the data any type of distribution it tells us that what probability of data would lie between k standard deviations so we can use this formula which is 1 minus 1 divided by k square k being the number of standard deviation away from the mean this percentage of data would lie in that particular range for example if your mean is 10 and your standard deviation is 3 you want to find out what proportion of data would be between two standard deviations so this is 10 two standard deviation would mean 6 on this side which is 16 and 6 on this side which is 4 since we are two standard deviation we will say 1 minus 1 divided by 2 square which will give us 75% so this is shibashov's inequality next one is coefficient of variation coefficient of variation is calculated as standard deviation divided by mean and simply higher lower the number better it is interpretation is risk taken to earn one percentage return and lower the risk better it is next value is sharp ratio sharp ratio is return earned on a portfolio minus risk free rate of return divided by standard deviation of the portfolio interpretation is excess return earned for one unit of risk and then higher the returns earned better it is so higher the sharp ratio better it is